Is chemical abortion safer than Tylenol or a shot of penicillin? Could ordering abortion pills online lead to any complications for a woman? My name is Dr. Ingrid Skop. I have been a practicing obstetrician gynecologist in Texas for over 30 years, caring for tens of thousands of women and delivering more than 5,000 babies. I serve as the Senior Fellow and Director of Medical Affairs for the Charlotte Lozier Institute. I am also a former board member of the American Association of Pro-Life Obstetricians and Gynecologists and a fellow of the American College of Obstetricians and Gynecologists. My research on maternal mortality, abortion complications, and women's health has been published in multiple peer-reviewed journals. I have provided expert testimony at both the state and federal levels on legislation related to abortion, including the Texas legislation. Abortion is an action that occurs when a pregnancy is known to exist, when a new living human being is in existence and the intent is to end that human being's life. This can be performed surgically or chemically, and we're gonna discuss chemical abortions. These are um, increasingly being promoted to women and now account for more than 50% of all abortions. In 2000, the FDA approved a regimen of mifepristone which blocks progesterone receptors, cutting off hormonal support, and ending the life of the embryo or fetus. Mesoprostol is given 24 to 48 hours later, causing contractions to express the tissue from the uterus. This regimen is followed by frequent complications. The average woman will bleed for nine to 16 days. 8% will bleed for longer than a month. Infection is common as both of the medications suppress the immune system. The FDA has reported 26 women who died following chemical abortions. The number is likely far higher, but half of these women died from overwhelming sepsis. Frequently, the tissue is not completely expelled and the woman will require surgery, usually a suction aspiration or the layman's term is a DNC, to remove the tissue. And about 1% of the time, it fails completely to kill the embryo or the fetus. So going back to that question, is chemical abortion really safer than Tylenol or penicillin? You must know that virtually everything about abortion data collection in the United States is voluntary. We don't really know how many abortions are performed, how many complications occur, and we certainly don't know how many deaths follow abortion. Better quality data can be found through records linkage studies. That is, when we know through insurance when abortions have been paid for, and then we can link to all of the complications that are paid for subsequently. A Medicaid records linkage study in this country found that 6% of women presented to an emergency room with a complication within a month of a chemical abortion. 60% of these were miscoded as having been due to a miscarriage. Scandinavian studies show us that at less than seven weeks gestation, adverse events occur in one out of five women who have a chemical abortion. This is four times as many as those who have surgical abortions. 15% of those women had a hemorrhage and almost 6% required surgery to evacuate the tissue. An additional Scandinavian study showed that in the first trimester, almost 10% of these women required surgery, and in the second trimester, almost 40% did. Meta-analyses are performed when all available studies are looked at. When abortion advocates analyzed all of these studies and were not able to cherry pick the data, they documented that 3.4 to 4.8% of those chemical abortions failed. Again, one out of 20 women require surgery after a chemical abortion. In 2016, the FDA expanded the use of chemical abortion from seven to 10 weeks. They no longer requested complication reporting unless it caused a woman to die. In 2021, the FDA went even further. Using the COVID pandemic as an excuse, they removed all the in-person restrictions. That means there is no longer a physical examination, ultrasound, or labs required before a woman is prescribed a chemical abortion. Initially, this was performed by telemedicine, but very quickly this progressed to online ordering and mail order distribution unsupervised by any medical professions. These abortions are being targeted to women in states with abortion restrictions. 
So what could go wrong in an abortion without any medical supervision? Well, the most common complication is that a woman may not know her gestational age. If she underestimates by a month, as I mentioned, her likelihood of requiring surgery is far higher. 2% of women have a pregnancy not in the uterus, but in another location, generally the fallopian tube. This is called an ectopic pregnancy. Mifepristone does not work on an ectopic pregnancy. It can continue to grow, the tube can rupture, and this may lead to life-threatening hemorrhage. Women have died from these ruptured ectopic pregnancies. It has always been the standard of care in our country for a woman who is Rh negative to receive a shot called Rogam if she has an early pregnancy loss. This prevents her body from forming an immune response to her future children. We're no longer doing that when we're having these unsupervised abortion. Many women will form immune responses, isoimmunization in future pregnancies. Historically, when these were not treated, 14% of these children were stillborn and half suffered a neonatal death or brain injury. And finally, importantly, when we are distributing them through the mail, we have no way of knowing who ordered the drug, who is consuming the drug, and whether they are doing so willingly. This will obviously benefit sex traffickers, incestuous abusers, and coercive boyfriends, but not women who may be inadvertently given these drugs. In 2020, the Guttmacher Institute reported there were almost half a million chemical abortions in our country. As I've mentioned, the failure rates are not negligible ranging between 3.4 and 9.9 percent when used in the first trimester. So even with in-person supervision in effect, we would have expected 16 to 48,000 women yearly to require surgery after chemical abortion, often in emergent conditions in our overwhelmed emergency rooms. Thank you for listening, and I know you have more questions. Please visit the Texas Alliance for Life the Charlotte Lozier Institute, or the American Association of Pro-Life Obstetricians and Gynecologists websites for additional information.